Hey everyone, welcome to the Field and Garden Podcast. I'm Jesse Graven from the Gardener's Workshop. Over the next few Saturdays, we're replaying some of our favorite episodes of the year, ones that had tons of listens because they're packed full of useful information. We hope you enjoy. Hey friends, welcome to another episode of the Field and Garden Podcast. It's your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and I really appreciate you choosing to take a listen today. And friends, what an episode we have today. It never fails that every time I get some one-on-one time with my flower farming friends and have a chat, that I come away with new with learning and tips and information that just floor me. So even after me farming for almost two and a half decades, I learned so much with the talk that I had today with Dave Dowling on snapdragons. Such an important crop, such a significant crop, and I can't wait for you to listen in on our conversation. But first, I had some really sweet news that I wanted to share with you that the Field and Garden podcast is partnering with the Growing for Market magazine. You know, I attribute the lion's share of my business success to this publication. Um, Articles on growing and business that have literally, pun intended here, friends, have seeded my way um, the past two decades. And they just, it's a great magazine. Um, The magazine has published practical ideas and information for direct market flower and vegetable growers for over 31 years. All the articles are written by farmers who get their hands dirty and know what they're doing. The magazine is still on the same mission as when the flower farmer book author Lynn Bozinski founded this magazine in 1992 to connect with growers with the best ideas from other growers. There is a dedicated flower content um, article in every magazine, a decade's worth of back issues and over 1,600 archived articles with writers like Aaron Benzenkane, Gretel Adams, Pamela and Frank Arnowski, and Jonathan and Megan Lease. They're all available on the website with 10 new issues every year available on paper, digital, or both, you're guaranteed to find something to fine-tune your farm in Growing for Market. So if you do farmer's markets, CSAs, farm stands, pick your own, florist sales, or even wholesaling, whether you're a commercial grower or you want to grow like one, Subscribe to Growing for Market for the nitty-gritty details on growing, marketing, and the business of local farming. And they have shared a special offer for you. Use the coupon code WORKSHOP to get 25% off of any subscription to you, subscription, sorry y'all, to the original Farmer to Farmer magazine at growingformarket.com. Friends, Totally highly recommend that magazine. Um, And I know that Dave would join me in saying that it is just packed with great information. And so I am going to let us now pause to have a listen to Dave Dowling and I um, chatting about Snapdragons. Hi, Dave. Great to be here with you today. Hi there. How you doing? I am good. I'm excited to talk about snapdragons today. Um, I know that while they are really an easy crop or they have become an easy crop for me to grow, I know that there are some details that can really help people grow them better and for longer and be more specific. So that's what I'd love for us to talk about today. So, um, you know, let's let's just dive right in. Why don't you just tell me why would somebody want to grow snapdragons? Well, snapdragons are great tall linear flower for bouquets. Almost every florist uses snapdragons. So if you can grow a good snapdragon and sell to your florist, they will buy them regularly every week, which is another reason that snapdragons should be succession planted. Um, Not quite as often as sunflowers, but every three weeks and plant from the whole season. So you have continuous supply of stems to pick. Um, It's not like a 
peony that you pick for that last week of May, first week of June, and it's done, you can have snapdragons for the entire season if you plant the correct groups at the right time. And that's the trick. And that's the trick I want to talk about because, you know, I have never tried to have snaps clash. You know, and I'm in southeastern Virginia. I'm zone 8A slash 7B. We teeter back and forth. You know, we just have planted them in fall. And when they were done, they were done. And we'd have them till about the end of June, early July. So that's what I really want us to talk about. So that kind of just tucks us right in. Explain to us what that means, what you just said. Are you talking about the groups? Right. The snapdragons come in four different groups. One, two, three, four. Sometimes they're done by Roman numerals. So like a, a one, a one V or IV. So, but they're groups one through four, and the number pertains to when the flower is going to be blooming, not when you plant it, but when you're going to have the flowers on that plant. And the group one is for winter time, which most growers, most of your listeners aren't going to be growing snapdragons and harvesting them in December, January, early February, unless they're in uh, like a zone 10, really warm with no frost, or if they're going in a greenhouse, in a heated greenhouse in the winter. But a group one is for flowers that are going to be winter and very early spring blooming. So okay. one of the uh, common varieties that are group one is Maryland snapdragons. Comes in lots of colors. It's a series that's been around for 20 or 30 years. Um, they're just a tried and true snapdragon that works great. But if you try and grow a Maryland snapdragon in the heat of July and August or even May, it's just too hot. So it's gonna be really short. The flowers, if they do, do bloom, the flowers may spread way out on the stalk. So it's just not gonna look right. So you don't want to grow it in the summertime. They like the cool weather and the shorter days. It's the day length that makes the biggest difference. So, so just add, for the winter. Can I ask you this about that while we're, because I know this is going to get deep really quick. So mm -hmm. if you grow Maryland's, so let's just say they're fall planted out in the field. So they're going to be an early bloomer like Chantilly. Is that fair to if, say? If, or? if you do a Maryland in the field to overwinter, like a cool flower, it's going to be the one of the first ones to bloom in the spring. Okay. And do not expect them to rebloom if if you pinch right. them or you know cut them back because it's just too hot for them in the summer. Okay. And I know you do a lot of snapdragons. You do them over winter as a cool flower, which that's fine for the early spring blooms. But then you, if you want snapdragons good in June, July, August, and September, you need to plant new plants throughout the spring right. and summer. All right. So what's group two? Uh, group two is for late winter and uh, spring. So in other words, it, they, the groups usually overlap a little bit. If you were to look up in almost any seed catalog, it's going to tell you the group number after the Snapdragon name. And it might say one, or it might say one dash two, two dash three, three dash four, or just any individual number. So some of the Maryland's are just group one. They're best for December, January blooming. Some are one dash two, which are kind of borderline. They can do both group one, which is December, January, or they can do the January, February, March but they're not gonna like it once you get into April into late spring, it's just okay. too warm for them. All right, um, so what is group three? Group three is late spring and uh, fall. Because you figure the day length is about the same in March as it is in, I think, October, six months later. So the plants don't know whether it's March or April, except for plants are smarter than we think. They can tell when the days are getting longer or the days are getting shorter. Just like when a chrysanthemum blooms, it knows the days are getting shorter, it's time to bloom. Um, right. The snapdragons also know that, but you know, the, there's a day in the spring and a day in the fall that have the same length of day. So that snapdragon that does a group three or a group two can do early spring or fall. They kind of can go either one. Um, but the threes are uh, more for the fall and late spring, and the twos are for late winter and spring. And then you got the group four, which is once in the summer, which most people would grow if they're growing out in the field. Um, those would be things like Rocket, which has been around forever. The Potomac series, um, Opus is another series that likes the long warm days of summer. And those you could plant anytime from a little before your last frost in the spring, so in April, early May, and plant them up until mid to late June. Uh, but then after that, you wanna switch to doing group three, which is for the fall, because you're planting them in July, they're not gonna move until September, and then you're getting into fall. So let's just take a year mm -hmm. from Let's just make a clear example. Let's talk about me planting here okay. out in the field, no houses. And so I would fall plant. What would your, I mean, 
I plant all of those that you just talked about in the fall. And you then plant we them all in the fall. get a yes. six session. So we plant everybody in the fall. And so when if, if you're you... if you're warm enough, you can't do that in zone five and four. It's just too cold for them. OK, so it, it's you got to have a, a semi mild winter, uh, like a figure of zone seven. So if you're colder than that, you can do it into a tunnel. But colder than the zone seven, they're not going to overwinter out in the field. It's just too like it's down to zero in the winter. It's just not good for the snapdragons. OK, so they're just not happy. They're not happy. OK. All right. So a fall plant, what I'm going to fall plant, then what you're suggesting is that out in the field, when, what group would I plant? When would I plant the next group in very early in, spring? In the spring. Later, after those fall planted bloomings are done to kind right. of create a succession. Then you can, in, if you're growing in a tunnel where you've got warm enough for them to grow, do a group three, probably in early March. And that would be flowers for 12 week, 10 to 12 weeks later. And when I say early March, it's planning out the transplant. You wouldn't right. direct sow snapdragons. They're too small. You always start with plugs, either buy them or grow your own. Um, so you start with a group three, which is going to give you flowers from really late spring. Right. And then by April, uh, late April, early May, you might be planting group four, which is your Potomac, Opus, and other sun, summer loving, heat loving ones. Okay. And those can be blooming for you then again, 10 to 12 weeks later after you plant them, which is blooming in June, July, and August when it's hot, the days are longer. And then you'll switch back to group three. Right, that makes sense. Group, back to group three, or you also do group two, but group three is better for fall. Um, planting in late July, early August, and those can get you flowers into the fall. That is gonna clear yeah. the air for so many people. Right. And the, but now there, then, then there's some, some snapdragons that don't give a group. The two open face ones, Chantilly and Madam Butterfly, don't have a group, but figure them as a group two, three. Um, but I think it's the Chant, the Madam Butterfly can take the summer heat a little bit better. Chantilly does not like the summer heat. They usually die out and just sit there all summer. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like the heat. I can they don't like the heat, heat, the long days. All right. So, that's the group explanation. And that is a deep, I'm sure people are going to be listening to that over and over and over again, right. trying to figure out what, um, how to actually do that. So let's talk about varieties for a moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have any favorites or, I mean, it sounds to me like we just need to grow a variety of different varieties to have right. different <laughs> blue times. Exactly. You pick, pick the colors you want and then pick the variety that's the right group and then the variety within that. So in other words, you can do, um, you always want to have seasonally appropriate colors. So you don't want to be growing a lot of orange and red ones for June. Those are right. September, October colors, fall colors. So you want to make sure that you change your colors throughout the season of, of what you're planting. So you have the right color blooming at the right time. You know, if, you're, if you can get a Mother's Day crop, you want reds and pinks and whites. You don't want orange for Mother's Day. Right. Orange is for September. Um, yellow is a spring flower and also in the fall. So you just want to use the right color at the right time of the year. Um, but as far as succession planting, I recommend doing, if you're going to plant them in the fall, if you have a place where you can do the cool flowers over the winter, start planting in the spring, new transplants to go in into March in a tunnel or into April in the field, and um, pl then plant, plan to plant them every three weeks. Okay. And that way we have a fresh crop. Because there's other question about snapdragons is whether to pinch or not pinch. Um, yes. commercially, they don't get pinched. They're grown as a single stem, one really big, thick, tall stem, sometimes four feet tall. And is, as you know, the, the taller the stem is, the more you can sell it for, the higher the price is, right. even though the floor, so the customer may cut it down to be 12 inches. If you can sell them a 30 inch snapdragon, you'll make more money off of it. Um, but there are people who pinch the snapdragons as a seedling when they plant them out, which then gives you maybe four or six stems per plant. Um, but usually not quite as tall and as big as a single stem. The other thing you can also, when you grow as a single stem, you can cut it and leave a short stump, a two to three inch stump. And that's basically a really hard pinch. Then you sometimes get good second growth if you're still within the right group. So in other words, you don't wanna right. try and, you know, you might overwinter Maryland snaps, haven't bloomed for you great in March and April, but it, no matter what you do to that, it's not gonna grow and bloom again in June, July and August. It's just too hot for it. That is just making things come really clear for me, Dave. 
Okay. You know? I mean, you never get too old to learn new things. Right. But for as far real. as varieties, for varieties, there's two good ones for winter. Um, we talked before about Maryland. Then there's a variety called Cool. If they get cool weather, they like cool. Um, and then in the summer, you got two easy or well, three easy ones. Remember Potomac, which is the summer, um, Opus, which is for summer, and then uh, Rocket, which is also summer. Right. And all of those are also have colors listed as three, four, as for the sort of the summer ones. So they can also use those for spring and fall. The ones that are listed as three, four. If it's straight up just four, it's only going to do well blooming in the long days in the heat of the summer. Oh my goodness. All right. So here's probably another loaded question. What spacing would you recommend right. for growing snaps? Is that okay. again, like, are you trying to get one single big stem or yeah. to encourage branching? Does that affect that? Right. If you're growing them as a single stem plant that you're not going to pinch, I recommend planting three seeds in every soil block or every cell of the plug tray. So then you plant out three plants together in every six inch square of the support netting. Snap dragon should always have support netting. Um, if you grow in the field without it, chances are you can get a storm and it's gonna blow them over. And snap dragons are geotropic, means they grow against gravity, not toward the sun. They grow toward the sun some, but definitely against gravity. So you have a plant that leans over and leans at a you know 70 degree angle, the end is gonna curl upright. And no matter what you do, you can't get that kink out of the stem. Right. So that's really important as support netting. So if you're growing them as a single stem, you're aiming for 12 plants per square foot, which is three plants per square of the support netting. So if you're going to pinch them, if you're going to, if you're planning to pinch them in advance when you first transplant them out, which recommend planting them, wait a week or two, and then pinch them to give them a little time to recover from the transplant before you do the pinching. Um, then you plant one square per, one plant per square of the netting. If right. you know you're going to pinch. Right. All right. So what kind of um, feeding program do you um, recommend with SNAPs? Um, they definitely do need fertilizer. And I'm going to have to look in the book here real quick and double check on the actual amount. Um, but you definitely want, do want to use fertilizer. Um, you'll notice with any flower that you grow, if you use fertilizer, it makes a huge difference, um, especially with anything that's in the ground for a long time. Snap dragons are in there about 12 weeks. Um, if you have a plant that you can know you're going to be picking off of multiple cuttings, whether it's a snapdragon you're trying to get to regrow or something like adgeratum that's going to grow and bloom throughout the summer, it's often good to add some more fertilizer once they've been growing for a couple months because they, I always like to say, they've eaten everything they can reach and you got to bring them some more food. Yeah. Um, good... no, matter how, no matter how good your soil was when you started, a, a plant may use everything that's there and you got to give them some more. Um, but for fertilizer, you want to aim for a uh, 200 parts per million of nitrogen with a balanced fertilizer, so which means not any one number is no bigger than the other. So it can be 555 or 101010. Then you want to aim for 200 parts per million of nitrogen. All right. So you've grown these beautiful snaps. So what stage do you harvest in? About half to three quarters of the spike opened. Now, there's something else to think about. If you're growing them outdoors and not in a tunnel or a greenhouse, you have to contend with bees. Um, we've all seen little bumblebee go up in the snapdragon. It's so cute to watch them go in there where they've just pollinated that flower. And within a day or two, that flower is going to fall off and it's going to start to make a seed pod. That's why if you see snapdragons that have been in, in the garden or in the field too long, you start to see seed pods on the bottom and there's still flowers left to open. So if you're out in the field and you know you have a lot of bees on the farm, you might have to pick them a little bit sooner before they've started to pollinate the florets. Because once they're pollinated, literally they fall off in a day or two and then you start to get a seed pod. Yeah, and that's just such a good point. I just learned, I mean, every year, I just seem like I cut them earlier and earlier and earlier to avoid problems. And don't you, I mean, for us, it feels like those hot, sunny afternoons, you'll, you'll cut what you think is hard in the morning. You'll cut everything <laughs> that's even remotely close to being ready and then that afternoon at dusk, you know, I'm walking the dog around the yard. And it's like, did I did even I cut that patch? <laughs> right. Yep. They get ready fast in the warm weather. Yes. Um, I would say the other thing is there's also some beetles that will eat, eat and damage the petals. I mean, not the petals, the flowers. So leaving them out there longer 
uh, can damage them. But you, if you are growing them in a greenhouse or tunnel where they're protected from bees and insects, you will you can leave them on the plant longer. They have a shelf life in the plant, so to speak. Unlike a snap, uh, unlike a sunflower that you need to pick when it's ready today, you can't leave it for two more days. A snapdragon sometimes you leave it for a couple more days um, and just let it bloom farther up the spike. All right, so you're harvesting some um, snaps, and I hear this a lot. People are just really struggling with keeping the stems straight in the bucket, and I have seen all kinds of contraptions, yep. and I just don't know what I did different, but I never seemed to have needed that assistance. I mean, what, did you use anything in your buckets to keep the stem straight? I didn't use anything in the buckets, but I had really tall buckets. I had some six gallon buckets that were about yes. four or five inches taller. And you basically fill the bucket so they can't lean over. Or if the bucket's not full, you put it in the corner of the cooler and, and lean the flowers up against the corner so they stay upright. Because as soon as they lean over just from one side of the bucket to the other, that's going to curl up. And once they curl, there's no one curling them. Yeah, there's nothing like coming out and finding multiple buckets that were a little crooked in the bucket. They weren't, the stems weren't straight up and, and down. And, and there's all no the tips them. And all the tips are curled now, right. And yeah. you, as the bouquet maker, oh my gosh, you think, oh, we can still use it in bouquets. Oh my gosh, my sister would almost like hunt me down and burn me at the stake. <laughs> they were so hard to use. I yes. mean, yep. it's just very, very yeah. difficult. But no. I guess the point I want to make is that, I've seen a lot of people using a lot of different apparatuses and, you know, that's yes. fine. However, as you ramp your business up, that is more stuff that has to be cleaned and washed and right. kept up with. There really is ways to not have to need that. And I just never had to go there. Um, I mean, I've even seen somebody, I can't think of who it was. It might've been the people that make the Percona boxes have a grid work that they put yes. over. I think that those are made for Gerber daisies, right? To hang right. Gerbers on. Yep. Um, but people are using them for other uses. And if the buckets are filled properly and full. And tall or, enough. That's the biggest thing. The buckets tall, can enough, be tall enough. You know, how many short buckets have you seen that the flowers are just splayed out? And not only does it look really bad, it can definitely affect the quality right. of your stem. So, all right, so we've harvested our stems as you know earlier than we probably think that we should. We're gonna keep them straight in the bucket at all expenses. Um, so what cooler temperature do you think snaps hold the best at? You wanna aim at the 34 to 38 degrees. If your cooler is really accurate, go for the 34, but not if it wavers back and forth and it might freeze. So in other words, if your cooler you know, goes up and down, has a swing of four or five degrees, 34 degrees, you might swing down four degrees and they'll freeze. So that's why you want to know your cooler, whether it's really accurate and never gets too cold. Um, so with the 34 to 38 degrees is good. Um, the other thing I would point out is when you harvest them, you end up taking off most of the leaves so that all the water goes to the, um, to the flower. And so here's the other thing I wanted to ask was, do you find that snapdragons keep their color? in storage? They do for a little while, but then they do start to fade. In other What's words, a little while? What's a little while? Well, two or three days are fine, but what happens is as the new flowers open, they don't have any color. And that's partly because there's no sugar in the water. So that's definitely something we're gonna use a holding solution on them, but then they should have flower food once they're in the vase or getting ready to sell right. them. Otherwise the lisianthus is the same thing. Lisianthus in plain water, uh, blue lisianthus or purple, will, the buds will open up almost white without yeah. having sugar or flower food in the water. And so that'll be the other thing that we just didn't even talk about. So um, do you, what is the conditioning? I mean, I know that we've always, we use CVB tabs, the chlorine tablets mm -hmm. in all of our harvest buckets, um, just as a general practice. And then we yep. move to holding solution if we have to hold them or holding solution would go to our florist in their buckets packs because they're going to hold them right until they sell right. them with ultimate use of fresh flower food. Do you find, did you find that that to be the best practice? Yep. Like with any flower, clean water is the most important thing. So start with yeah. clean buckets, use the, this, the tablet, the chlorine tablet's great to, to sanitize your water, especially if you own uh, well water because you may think your water is clean, but it's really not as clean as you think, because that really yeah. makes a difference. Um, then use the holding solution, which also helps keep the water clean and keeps out the bacteria, because bacteria is what does them in. 
Yeah, and you know, you saying that about using it to clean the water. I think the most eye-opening experience I had as a young farmer is when I hooked up irrigation and the irrigation had to have a filter because it was a slow drip, gravity driven. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And I have city, I was, I mean, that's city and well water. I've done yeah. it both ways. There is, it's fascinating how much stuff is in our water. <laughs> it's in the water. Yes. You just don't see. Yep, and exactly. All of and that stuff is what clogs our stems up, right? right. I mean, yep. that and microscopic stuff. One other thing I want to point out is though, is that also because the snapdragon is a, a spike flower, it is somewhat ethylene sensitive. Yes. So like delphinium, larks for all those. So that's another reason that you would leave them on the plant longer rather than leave them in your cooler longer. So in other words, don't pick them on Thursday to sell them on Saturday. They'd be better off on the plant for one more day as long as they're not getting damaged from insects or anything, then to put them in the cooler for an extra day. Because in the right. cooler, it builds up ethylene and it causes the flowers to go bad sooner. So what we're saying is, as a general rule, those tall spiky flowers, snaps, mm -hmm. delphinium, delphinium, and larkspur would benefit from staying out in the garden or in the house for another day. Correct. Then cutting it. So those would be great. I mean, that kind of helps even to spread your harvest out, you know, if you're, right. if you're really pushed, it's to know that it's beneficial um, to do that. So, you know, I found that it would really, really have been useful for me during my commercial years to have extended my SNAP um, offering because right. I mean, our florists would have bought them every week. I mean, exactly. There, there is nothing yeah. like a garden snap compared yeah. to what they bring in a box. Yeah, and snap dragons are fairly easy to start yourself. Yeah, but they're also a very cheap plug to buy. Um, sometimes as low as twelve cents each for a tray of two hundred and ten. So the yeah. the, the plug tr the plugs can be pretty cheap to just schedule another shipment of three trays every three weeks throughout the season, so you don't forget them. Because we all know that once it gets to be June and July, when you're out there picking flowers and weed and watering, you forget to plant the seeds. <laughs> well, not only that, but most people's growing conditions to start seeds is way too hot. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's another point. So, you know, and I mean, it's like what I think is not obvious to everybody is that you don't have to say, I'm going to order a whole year's worth of Snapdragon plugs. Okay. I'm, I'm going to order those times that... It's more difficult. I'm either too busy or my conditions aren't good for me to start them. I'll start my own until April. And then we're going to start having plug trays show up. I mean, that is right. like a smart business decision. Yeah. Yeah. Cause especially because like I said, they're one of the cheapest plugs out there. Yeah. I mean, that just makes such really good sense, you know, and we, um, we sold Snapdragons, tons of them commercially they were always very helpful in bouquets, but we even sold a lot of straight bunch snaps, mm -hmm. supermarkets and at farmer's market. They're just a pretty flower. Yeah. And lots of great colors. I'm um, pretty much yeah. every color there is everything but blue. You know, there's purplish, red, yellow, orange, white. And, you know, color. I really got a, a fascination with, um, I love Opus, the multicolored mm -hmm. on one bloom. That's yep. really a really beautiful one. Um, and I also, and you just don't see it very often. And I don't even know if you even have ever, have you ever grown one called Snappy Tongue? Not familiar with that one. You know, no. it is, it's a later, it bloomed after Rocket for me. And it's almost like a part Rocket with a part Madam Butterfly. The okay. edges are kind of ruffled, but it's not a full double, but you can only get it in a mix. I've never been able to find it as a solid color, um, but there is people just love all of those different shapes of flowers and colors. Yeah. It's just a great flower to add to your line. Yeah. And, and, and if you are, I was gonna say, if you are selling to florists, it's very rare that they would ever find the double Madame Butterfly or Opus, um, Madame Butterfly or Chantilly at the wholesaler. So they don't even, sometimes don't even know what it is. You know, they've yeah. never seen it before. And, you know, I was, that's a good point to bring up. So in um, my offering of those flowers, I mean, back when, you know, back when you and I were doing it, it was dinosaur days, right? So I didn't sit, my florist customers didn't see pictures of the flowers I was selling. Right. They saw a printed <laughs> list. I wouldn't even list the necessarily the name of the Snapdragon. I listed them by color because they right. could really care less I mean, and it's, it confuses them, I think. It's like, you know, if I put 
peach or apricot snaps and I could put how and I sometimes I even mixed whatever was blooming in that color you know together mm-hmm. in that to have shades so I think that there's a lot of opportunity in snaps and that's why I really wanted to talk to you because I know the group thing is really really confusing I'm still I understand exactly what you're saying but it doesn't just flow out of me like it flows out of you right um, it's, it's confusing but very important it's very very <laughs> important and um, I think it would be just a really, really big help for people. So Dave, thank you so much for opening our eyes to Snapdragons more. Always great. Great to talk with you. Well, friends, I hope that the group numbers are a little clearer for you after um, having a listen to this chat that I had with Dave. And you know what, friends, this is a great example of the kind of teaching that Dave does in his online course bulbs, perennials, woodies, and more um, that is in the Flower Farming School online series. You can learn more about Dave's course over at thegardenersworkshop.com. You can also sign up to get on his wait list. Registration only opens once a year for five short days, and that happens in June, and then the course starts in July. And um, you can Connect with us over there at thegardenersworkshop.com to learn more. And when you sign up on his wait list, that means you also get the free resources um, that he does from time to time to kind of give you a taste of what's to come and his teaching style. So folks, until we meet again, I hope you're enjoying the Field and Garden podcast. Ciao.